Let's talk about what happens on the inside of your body when you're fasting. So over here we have a start of a fast, and we go 24 hours, 48, and 72. So there's a lot of really magical things that happen when you fast. Our bodies have developed over a long period of time and have adapted to starvation many, many times. So we have all these unique proteins that get expressed or turned on um, that have to do with your brain doing better, the different parts of your body surviving better. Our bodies have not adapted to the frequency of eating like we do now, like every three hours. So right around 12 hours, we get this spike in growth hormone. Growth hormone is the anti-aging hormone. It's the main fat burning hormone. It's the hormone involved with healing um, joints, and it's involved with protein synthesis or making different new proteins. Uh, some people take growth hormone, uh, get injected. I don't recommend it, but they take it to help heal certain parts of your body. But guess what? Fasting will trigger it automatically. So just by the fact that you're fasting, you can increase growth hormone. And of course, exercise will also increase growth hormone as well. So it starts about 12 hours and, and it increases as you go on and on. Now, at about 18 hours, you start developing something called autophagy. Autophagy is an interesting thing that happens with your body where you start recycling old damaged proteins and microbes as well. One type of protein would be the advanced glycated end products, which basically when you combine glucose with a protein, it becomes very sticky. Um, so let's say you're on a high carbohydrate diet um, and that sugar combines with your own protein in your body and that starts to glycate or just kind of destroy some of the proteins in your body and then they don't function anymore and they get sticky and they clog things up. Well, guess what? Your body will start cleaning all that up and turning these damaged proteins into new amino acids where your body can use them. Um, amyloid placking, which occurs in the brain and other parts of the body, is a type of protein that can be cleaned up with autophagy. So it's any type of cellular proteins that are not working anymore in your body. Um, autophagy will start cleaning that up and start to renew the tissue. And it starts right about 18 hours and it gets more and more and more as you start fasting. And in about 24 hours and a little bit longer, you start to really deplete this glycogen reserve, this storage supply of glucose in your liver. So the more that the liver is depleted with glycogen, the more you're gonna be running on ketones as the alternative fuel. And if you have a fatty liver, for example, your body will start using that fat and turning that into ketones. So your body is finally able to start tapping into this stored energy and you're running more and more on ketones, which is a superior fuel. And because you're running on ketones, ketones are an appetite suppressant. So your hunger goes away, cravings are gone. Um, they're antioxidants, so you're building up your antioxidant reserve. They provide more oxygen, so your body is running on more oxygen, less CO2, it's more efficient. And because ketones are a much more efficient fuel than glucose, the thyroid does not have to work as hard. And you may find that your T3 is a little bit lower, but the thyroid stimulating hormone is normal. And all that means is your thyroid is adapting to this new type of fuel. Now, some other cool things that are happening right around um, 24 hours is that your inflammation is dropping significantly. If you wanted to even speed it up more, you can add some vitamin D to that, and that will really help you. So any type of conditions that involve inflammatory states like arthritis, bursitis, um, autoimmune type conditions start to improve uh, about 24 hours. You start getting more gut healing because the gut now doesn't have to work so frequently with the gallbladder being stimulated and the pancreas stimulating its enzymes, the gut finally has a chance to just chill out. So if you have this condition called SIBO, which there are microbes in the small intestine and they should normally be in the large intestine, that starts to uh, become corrected. You start increasing stem cell in the gut. So your gut starts to heal. The heart loves ketones way better than glucose. So you start getting uh, improvement in the cardiovascular function and as well as in brain function. There's something called BDNF. This is a factor that helps make new brain cells. So your brain starts to repair at 24 hours. 
As you keep going on, you would think you're gonna be losing muscle protein, but that's not really what happens because your body becomes more efficient and there are certain uh, genes that um, are sparing proteins. So it's not using muscle protein. So the efficiency of fuel is much better. Plus with autophagy, you're using the old damaged proteins and giving you new proteins. So the combination is really good. So the amount of nutrition that you really need to run the body is a lot less because the body just dials down and it can run on a less amount of nutrients. So that's a positive thing. Now, the other thing that happens during autophagy is that you're also cleaning out microbes and fungus and mold and yeast. Um, and to kill off those microbes, your body develops certain oxidants and you also have antioxidants um, on the flip side. So your body actually makes things like hydrogen peroxide to kill off microbes, but it also on the flip side makes its own antioxidants to actually protect the body against the oxidation. So we have this entire balance. It's only when we have lower amounts of antioxidants and higher amount of oxidants that we get this thing called oxidative stress, which things start breaking down. But when you're doing fasting, you're getting a nice balance of more antioxidants and your body's starting to heal. Now, when you get to 48 hours, you really start to stimulate the stem cells. These are undifferentiated cells. In other words, they're cells that don't have a purpose. So they can turn into this tissue or that tissue depending on what the body needs. So you start to stimulate the stem cell and get more healing and more repair, more anti-aging. Um, you also get decreased risks of certain types of cancer. You get shrinkage of certain tumors you start making more mitochondria. Now, if you push it and go up to 72 hours, you get even more stimulation of stem cells, okay? And better immune function. But when you actually get into 72 hours or greater, I recommend you do that as a periodic thing, uh, simply because a lot of people going into this uh, have nutritional deficiencies in there. If you jump in too fast, you can get a little bit dizzy, you can have some side effects, so you wanna gradually do this over a period of time. But those are some general things that happen when you're fasting. Um, I recommend doing intermittent fasting on a regular basis, okay? And probably a good average pattern of doing this would be going 18 hours of fasting with a six hour window. So you would eat and then wait six hours later and then eat and then fast for 18 hours. This would be a really good pattern to follow. And then you can actually make it more strict over time, depending on how you do. Then what you can do is periodic prolonged fasting to achieve additional health benefits, uh, whether it's for your immune system because you have an autoimmune uh, problem, or you just wanna look younger with your skin, uh, or you want more brain cells, you want a better heart function, better gut function, uh, or let's say you have cancer and you wanna uh, improve that because one thing that fasting will do is it will increase your resistance to stress. And even if someone's on chemotherapy, um, it will actually help the body's resistance against chemicals and poisons, which is quite remarkable. Make sure you take your minerals um, during fasting. So I know a lot of people recommend just doing either a water fast, that you're just drinking water, or a dry fast where you're not drinking anything. Uh, I recommend doing a water fast with nutrients just because if you are deficient, you can have problems. So you want your minerals, you want your B vitamins, and you want your salt, very important. Right around eight o'clock in the morning, uh, you have the spike in cortisol. And if cortisol spikes, sometimes that can cause your body to um, make more glucose and you can have higher blood sugars. And it happens with a lot of people with blood sugar issues. Nothing to worry about. That will improve over time. But if you just add exercise in the morning, that will burn off some of that extra sugar. And if you're fasting, it's not coming from your diet. It's just coming from your liver making glucose, making a little too much because maybe the cortisol is too high. Okay, so just wanted to point that out. And I have videos on that. I'll put a link down below. It's called the Dawn Phenomenon. Now, if you're LDL, so-called bad cholesterol, which is not really bad. Low density lipoprotein is increased. The reason for this, especially if you're not consuming any type of significant carbohydrates and you're doing fasting, this is increased from a different reason. 
um, think about one of the purposes of LDL. It's to deliver cholesterol to different tissues, right? Well, think about all the things that are happening when your body is fasting. You are going through a major healing process. And cholesterol is the raw material for your cell membranes, uh, for your brain to make hormones, to make vitamin D, to make bile. 40% of all the cholesterol in your body is there to supply the membrane of your cells, which is essential to protect the cell and allow for things to go in and out of the cell. So maybe one of the reasons why your body might need the cholesterol to be uh, transported through this carrier protein is healing the cellular membranes. Or it could be that it needs to have the raw material to make more hormones. I would not worry about that if you are concerned. There are various tests that you could do to determine what's happening to this cholesterol. Is it doing damage or not? But I would not worry about it. But anyway, I wanted to create a video just to kind of show you what happens to the inside of your body when you're fasting. Thanks for watching. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications.